<laughs> so, no. Did you take the offering? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll do it after. That's fine. It does not matter. Okay. Well, so um, in full disclosure here, um, I had written several pages of what I was going to say, and it was generally hor uh, heading toward a criticism of the conflation between politics and Christianity. But I had no clear sense of direction, and I was uneasy because I sensed that what I was producing was a creation of my own ego. So, and this was while we were on vacation in Hawaii. So I continued praying to Jesus for direction, and I heard twice very clearly point toward me. So um, I have endeavored to do that, and um, it is my prayer that Lord, you would find the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth pleasing to you today. Amen. So, the Apostle John was an eyewitness to Jesus's ministry um, and of the writers of the Gospels, he was the only one who experienced Jesus's ministry contemporaneously with Jesus. He was there when it took place. And we don't know, or maybe we do, but I can't remember. I know there's some controversy about whether he actually penned his, um, his gospel or whether it was dictated by him in his later years. But in any case, his gospel begins famously with the words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So, what was that light? What was the essence of what Jesus came to do for us? What he wanted to see happen for us and within us? So, we can get some sense of that from Jesus' own words in John's Gospel. <clears throat> um, Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. And he went on to say, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So he came to nurture his flock and, in fact, to lay his, line, uh, lay his life on the line to protect the flock. So um, he was giving of himself for us. And in John 10, 30, he says, I and the Father are one. So clearly this um, is a direct corroboration of John's opening words in his gospel that God, uh, Jesus was with God, he was God, and um, he's been there since the beginning. And actually, I want to <laughs> parenthetically say that I had started off, I was going to be talking about the creation event and how that speaks to the existence of God and the miracles of God's creation, intelligent design, that sort of thing. But I think we have one among us who would be much better um, equipped to do that, Martin. Um, Jesus also said, the works I do in my Father's name testify about me. So what he did during his life on earth testified about who he was. And what did he do? Well, he did many miracles. He turned water into wine. Um, he fed thousands of people from a young boy's lunch and Matthew 14, 13 through 21. He saved 
the dying servant of an officer in the occupying army, which considered in uh, current times is very profound about what it says about the heart of Jesus. He raised a dear friend from the dead. He cured blindness, lameness, leprosy, and bleeding, cast out demons, forgave adulterers, visited and ministered to outcasts. So Jesus clearly had great powers that reflected the mysteries of God, and he exercised those powers in particular ways. And they, they speak volumes about Jesus' heart. And it's all about love. He came without a political agenda, and his miracles intersected people's lives, bringing relief at moments of grief, need, sickness, and vulnerability. So Jesus was using his powers to bring love and compassion to those around him. His miracles were never destructive, except, I suppose you could say, when he drove legion spirits into the herd of pigs that then ran into the sea and were drowned, he destroyed a herd of pigs. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37, uh, we read, uh, and this is uh, Jesus' encouragement, and he does makes this encouragement in several places in Scripture, in the Gospels. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So, loving God the Father with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength in one passage is added, and loving your neighbor as yourself were the commandments that Jesus wanted to leave with us that would surpass all the laws and all the prophets. Luke 10, 25, Jesus tells us a parable to a teacher of the law that describes an outcast who did not live according to accepted Jewish doctrine of the time, but who performed kind acts for a wounded stranger, and those kind acts would inherit for this outcast eternal life. So, Jesus values, and God, in fact, values the acts that we perform that come from love and compassion more than following a certain line of practice. And in fact, Jesus preached numerous times about the Pharisees who wanted to do everything perfectly. You couldn't do anything on the Sabbath. And yet, Jesus says, well, who among you who has uh, um, livestock fall in the well on the Sabbath would not seek to pull them out of the water? And that's exactly the act of love, contrary to the current practices of the day, that Jesus came to encourage people um, to um, enact. This emphasis on love is amplified in uh, 1 John 4, where um, the writer of the letter says, God is love. So God is love. Jesus came to encourage and to um, perform acts of love and compassion. <clears throat> so he came to change our hearts not our living conditions. In Matthew 5, 45, he tells us that he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. So all of us living on earth experience the same vagaries of life and death, illness and loss, 
but Jesus came to change our hearts. Jesus doesn't care about what we eat, where we live, whether we have money in the bank, own a house, a car, or even a pair of shoes. He cares about our hearts and the love we have for our fellow man and woman. Jesus came to share his and the Father's unconditional love with us so that we will have life and have it to the full. And we get a sense of what that means other places in Scripture. For example, Luke 12, 22, where Jesus came to relieve us of fear and anxiety. Fear not. Fear not. Do not be anxious about what you will wear or what you will eat. Will not the Father who cares about the sparrow care about you even more? For me to fully grasp the love of Jesus and the Father, it was necessary for me to viscerally experience this love through extended periods of silence and solitude while intentionally opening myself to God. And Jesus gives an example, gives us an example of spending a lot of time in the wilderness alone with the Father. And I think it is that sort of opening ourselves to God. I mean, intercessory prayer is really important. We see Jesus doing it on behalf of his disciples. But even in his time of greatest tribulation in the garden at Gethsemane, where he asked his disciples to come and witness with him, his fear, his anguish, his pleading with God to change his conditions, he came apart. He separated from them to be alone, to pray to the Father, to hear directly from the Father. And it has been my experiences in those times when I have come apart on um, intentional times of silence and solitude and opening myself to God, that I have experienced viscerally the love of God for me. And it is in that way that I have come to appreciate um, the, the value and the importance of loving other people. And it is... Uh, freed me from, uh, I mean, the knowledge of that love and the care that Jesus and the Father have for me have given me the freedom to not worry so much about what will, uh, what will happen to me, um, how our investments are performing, um, how am I going to fix a car or a refrigerator that is broken. It's you know, these things happen to everybody, and um, Jesus wants the best for us, but most of all, he wants our hearts, and he wants um, us to experience his love. So I want to uh, encourage the fathers and grandfathers among us um, to practice, to uh, perform the practice of coming apart and spending time with God in silence, letting him speak into your heart, letting him uh, communicate directly to you his love and care for you. And for us as fathers, grandfathers, to be most thrilled with the acts of love and compassion that our children and grandchildren perform that they may, may see us. We may encourage them by acting in these ways, by um, from our heart, sharing love and compassion, and that they will be likewise encouraged to love their fellow man and woman. Amen.